the moment you want the truth, as badly as you just now wanted air, you'll find it. We can show you the truth, but you have to want it. Show me. I want to know the truth. Now, we begin this Monday night with news of another quake rattling Korea's southeastern region. The Korean Meteorological Administration says a moderate earthquake with a preliminary magnitude of 4.5 struck near the city of Gyeongju at 8.33 p.m. Korea time. The tremor was felt all across Gyeongsangbukdo province. Officials say it was centered about 11 kilometers from the southeastern city, which was struck by two powerful earthquakes exactly a week ago. Now, since then, more than 370 aftershocks have been detected in the area, but tonight's quake is considered the strongest so far. Now let's take a look at the extreme weather. Typhoons Malakas and Maranti have left 29 people dead in East China. 15 people are still missing after the storms. Featuring devastating gales and downpours, the typhoons ripped through much of the region since the last Thursday, including the provinces of Jiangsu, Zhejiang, Fujian and Jiangxi, as well as the city of Shanghai. More than 7,000 houses collapsed, while a further 61,000 were damaged. As many as 600,000 people were evacuated to safer places. Total economic losses were estimated to be more than two billion U.S. dollars. The burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. It might be time to build a fallout shelter and stock up on the emergency supplies. Experts are saying a huge meteor is rocketing close to Earth with the power of three billion atomic bombs. China's Purple Mountain Observatory discovered the massive asteroid using Asia's largest telescope, determining the meteor was passing Earth with a range of 18.8 .8 times the distance between Earth and the moon. The asteroid, named 2009 ES, is one of over 1,600 asteroids near Earth. A minor change in its flight path could have devastating effect. What are tribulation saints? The tribulation saints are quite simply saints living during the tribulation. We believe that the church will be raptured before the tribulation, but the Bible indicates that a great number of people during the tribulation will place their faith in Jesus Christ. In his vision of heaven, John sees a vast number of these tribulation saints who have been martyred by the Antichrist. There before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. Revelation 7 verse 9. When John asks who they are, he is told, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Verse 14. The tribulation will be a time of great trouble for the wicked because of God's judgments. It will also be a time of great persecution for the believers, or saints, because of the Antichrist's persecution. Daniel saw the Antichrist waging war against the saints and defeating them, Daniel 7 verse 21. Of course, the saints' eternal salvation was secure. Daniel also saw that the Ancient of Days came and pronounced judgment in favor of the saints of the Most High, and the time came when they possessed the kingdom, Daniel 7 verse 22. The tribulation saints will hear the gospel from several possible sources. The first is the Bible. There will be many copies of the Bible left in the world, and when God's judgments begin to fall, many people will likely react by finding the Bible to see if prophecies are being fulfilled. Many of these tribulation saints will also have heard the gospel from the two witnesses of Revelation chapter 11. The Bible says these two individuals will prophesy for 1,260 days, three and a half years, verse 3, and perform great miracles, verse 6. And then there are the 144,000 Jewish missionaries who are redeemed and sealed by God during the tribulation, Revelation chapter 7. Immediately following the description of their sealing in Revelation 7, we read of the multitudes of the tribulation saints who are saved from every corner of the world in verses 9 through 17. The tribulation saints will serve their Lord Jesus Christ in the midst of desperate surroundings. Faithful to the end, many of these believers will die for their faith, but in their death they overcome. They overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, 
They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Revelation 12, verse 11. And God will reward them. He who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Revelation 7, verses 15 through 17. We praise the Lord that the great day of trouble will also be a great day of grace. Even as God is meeting out His just punishment on an unbelieving world, He will be restoring Israel to faith and extending grace to all who believe, both Jew and Gentile. God has always been in the business of saving people, and that salvation will still be available during the tribulation. Don't wait until then, however. Receive Jesus now. Terror struck the United States over the weekend with three attacks in New York City, New Jersey and Minnesota. Dozens of people were injured but no one was killed. The incidents have put the nation on edge with less than two months to go before the U.S. presidential election. Kim Okun reports. On Saturday, less than a week after the U.S. observed the 15th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks, three different acts of terror rocked the country. In New York City, a bomb exploded in the Manhattan neighborhood of Chelsea, injuring 29 people. Authorities said the blast was caused by an explosive device in or near what appeared to be a dumpster or garbage container. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio said the explosion was an intentional act, but insisted there was no specific threat against New York City from any terror organization. We know from everything we've seen so far, that this was an intentional act. Shortly after the blast, police sniper dogs uncovered a second bomb nearby, a pressure cooker with wiring attached. About 11 hours before the bombing in New York, a pipe bomb blew up inside a garbage can in Seaside Park, New Jersey, shortly before a scheduled charity race. Fortunately, no one was wounded. In another incident, a Somali attacker who made references to Allah stabbed and wounded nine people inside a mall in Minnesota. The attacker, who was shot dead by an off-duty police officer, asked at least one victim if they were Muslim. The following day, the so-called Islamic State group claimed responsibility for the Minnesota attack, saying the operation was carried out by one of its, quote, soldiers. According to Fusion.net, in August of this year, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration gave the green light to Oxitec, a British biotech company that aspires to release millions of genetically modified GM mosquitoes into the wild of the Florida Keys as a result of growing Zika virus fears. Oxitech engineered male mosquitoes are designed to destroy the species within, giving them a deadly gene that kills offspring they might have with a wild female mosquito. The idea behind the release of GM mosquitoes is to flood the local mosquito population with genetic mutants until the wild population eventually dies out. According to CBS News, fuel supplies in at least five states are severely in jeopardy after a gasoline pipeline spill in Alabama. The Colonial Pipeline Company's Line 1 carries fuel from Houston to New York, supplying gas for millions of people. One consumer said the following, I hit like three gas stations and all of them empty. In early September, at least a quarter billion gallons of gas erupted from an underground pipe, creating gasoline crises in Tennessee, Virginia, Georgia, South Carolina, Alabama, and North Carolina. 
Rome has hosted its first ever same-sex civil union. <laughs> Roman Catholic Italy was the last European Union member to legally recognize same-sex unions. As such, Luca De Sario and Francisco Raffaella Villarusso had considered tying the knot in spec. The ceremony, which was officiated by newly elected mayor Virginia Raggi, comes just under three months after the civil union bill came into force. While recognized as a step forward, the new law has also been criticized for not giving gay couples the same rights as married ones particularly concerning adoption. to their idols which were a snare unto them. Yea, they sacrificed to their sons and their daughters unto devils. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. New tonight, it's a movement that started with this, San Francisco taking a knee during the national anthem in protest of police brutality and the treatment of African Americans in this country. He was followed by Seattle rain star Megan Rapino, the entire Seattle Seahawks who linked arms during their home opener and several other NFL stars. Well now you can add Garfield High School to the list. Tonight the entire team and coaching staff knelt together during their pregame ceremony. King 5's Heather Graff is live at 10 with the decision to join in on what's been a controversial demonstration nationwide. Heather. Well, very controversial, Mark, but the head coach of Garfield High School said this team was determined. He says this is something his players are passionate about and something they will continue to do all season long. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light. For exactly one minute and 30 seconds. At the twilight's last gleaming. The national anthem played at this Friday night football game in Seattle. And the Garfield High School Bulldogs took a stand by refusing to stand. During the song, they all know by heart. Or the realm parts we watched. The purple-clad players kneeling together in single file, behind Garfield's coaching staff, and at the very front of the line, head coach Joey Thomas. This came from them. This came from the kids. Now, don't get me wrong, I supported 110%, and that's where my mind and heart was, but this is what they wanted, and I think that's what makes this so special. Thomas spoke to us on behalf of the kids on his team about their decision to join in on the national anthem protest that began in the NFL and seek to draw attention to racial injustice in this country. But this isn't about disrespecting our troops. We love our troops. It's because of our troops that we can exercise this right. Or the land of the free. The right to stand up for what they believe in 
or in this case, to take a knee. Break. And this game coming to an end just a few minutes ago. And as for Garfield's opponent tonight, we should mention several players from West Seattle also took a knee. In a statement Monday, Charlotte, North Carolina Mayor Jennifer Roberts notes Republicans don't need Charlotte to withdraw its local protections covering sexual orientation and gender identity before repealing the state law that has cost North Carolina major sporting events. Her response to North Carolina Republican legislative leaders and government Pat McCrory's deal to consider rescinding a state law limiting LGBT anti-discrimination protections was a resounding no. Before Charlotte's ordinance could take effect last spring, Republicans held a special session to block all local governments from passing similar rules and to limit bathroom options for transgender people. The National Religious Broadcasters honored a former Atlanta fire chief for standing up for his faith. Former Chief Kelvin Cochran was fired in January 2015 after Atlanta city leaders took issue with a men's Bible study he wrote. In the study, Cochran writes about sexual immorality. Atlanta's mayor fired him soon after, saying his biblical views were discriminatory. The NRB honored Cochran with the prestigious Faith and Freedom Award, citing his steadfast faith in a time when religious freedom is under attack. Be on the alert. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Fight the good fight of faith. I make a fist to squeeze the tag to the top of my skin. Now I approach the device. It opens the Facebook page I set it to. Colin Cravino has a microchip implanted in both of his hands. Some people just look really grossed out. I put my hand up and I let them poke at it and they freak out. Developed in the 1950s and 60s, RFID chips, short for radio frequency identification, have been used by retailers to track packages and prevent theft. Farmers use the chips to keep tabs on their livestock. Pet owners use them to identify their cats and dogs. And lately, members of the so-called body hacker movement have been implanting RFID chips under their skin, programming them to perform various tasks. Colin Corvino, a smartphone repairman in Brooklyn, New York, uses his chips to open his front door. He found them on a website called Dangerous Things that sells implant kits and offers user tips. I came across it when I was doing research on the Samsung deadbolt that I bought. And then the first thing that I noticed was that I could get an RFID tag that would work with the deadbolt. RFID retailers estimate that between 30 and 50,000 people worldwide have chip implants in their bodies. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. So on Wednesday, we introduce you to the third oldest person in North Carolina, 111-year-old Hester Ford. But now she has another distinction. She's gone viral on the Internet. Or should we say her faith has gone viral? Our Kristen Hampton has tonight's good news. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. As 111-year-old Hester Ford recited the 23rd Psalm, I sat in a chair in awe. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. For most of our interview, she wasn't too talkative. She had trouble hearing me. During one of her answers, she got confused. She has dementia. Time has taken its toll on Mrs. Ford. But then her family asked her to recite her favorite verse from the Bible. Yet yeah, do I walk through the valley of the shadows of death. I will fear no evil. As she stared straight into the camera, she recited every one of the 117 words without flaw. That video was posted to Facebook and people noticed. More than 43,000 people shared it. Almost 2 million people watched it. Thou repair a table before me in the presence of my inner. Time can take a lot of things as a person grows older, but for Mrs. Ford, the one thing 111 years left unscathed is her faith. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. 
and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In Charlotte with the good news. Um, and if you're someone that hasn't called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, he's the only hope. He's the way, he's the truth, and he's the life. Nobody comes to the Father but by him. There's only one mediator between God and men, and that is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the way, the truth, and the life. You see, the lie that's going around right now is there's other ways to the kingdom of God. All religions get you to the same God, and this is a lie from the pit of hell. The Bible, which again is God's holy word, it's perfect in all its ways, says there's one way, and that is Jesus Christ. So call upon his name today. He died on that cross for you, for me, for all of us, so that we can spend an eternity with him. For the wages of sin is death. All of us are guilty. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We see how things fast are see how fast things are moving right now. The tribulation period, Daniel's seventieth week, is quickly approaching. But right before that begins, Jesus Christ will rapture his bride to heaven. Like it says in the book of Revelation, in Revelation 4.1, it says, After this I looked and beheld. And then the, you know, the seals start opening once the church is in heaven. There's a reason the church is not mentioned after Revelation 3. That's because we're in heaven when the seals are opened. But the whole point here is there's two destinations. There's heaven and there's hell. And there's one way to heaven. And that is Jesus Christ. And there's no other way. So give your life to him today. The Bible says that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. It's not about how good you are. You may think you're such a good person, but if, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're going to spend an eternity separated from God. But the choice is yours. The gift is right in front of you. You have to receive that gift. Jesus Christ was brutally tortured and crucified on that cross for you, for me, for all of us. It doesn't matter if you're black, if you're white, if you're purple. The gift is in front of you. Receive it today. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ today. Make the best decision of your eternity today. Romans 10.9 says that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. Repent of your sins. Confess your sins to him. Acknowledge that you're a sinner and you're in the need of a savior. And call upon the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He loves you, and he's waiting for you with open arms. And today is still the day of salvation. I'll make that decision now, because there is no promise of tomorrow, and the trumpet of God is about to sound. There's many, many, many out there that are proclaiming the same message, that Jesus is coming soon, and this is truth, and things are moving fast. So don't put it off. Your eternity depend, could depend on it. It does depend on it, because we're not promised our next breath. But the Virgin Mary will not get you to heaven. Buddha will not get you to heaven. Muhammad will not get you to heaven. Any other false god, idol, things made with man, men's hands will not get you there. There is one name under heaven whereby we must be saved. And that is the man Christ Jesus. So make that decision today. Make the best decision of your eternity today. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ today. He loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And that's the mighty name of Jesus Christ. King of kings and Lord of lords, the Son of God. None other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. Give your life to him today. Be born again today. Make the best decision of your eternity today. The trumpet of God will sound at the appointed time. Prepare your hearts. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Keep looking up, brothers and sisters. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Son of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, is coming quickly. What must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin.
if we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. God will bring every deed into judgment, Ben Judah, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. I, the Lord, search the heart, I test the mind, and I will give every man according to his ways and according to the things he has done. By the deeds of the law, no flesh shall be justified in his sight. For by grace you are saved, through faith, this is not for yourselves. It is the gift of God. Be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, to save the world through him. He who believes in the Son is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Repent. Jesus is coming. Don't throw your life away. Give it to Jesus while there's still time, please. And he will hold us accountable. Time is running out, and I don't want you to go to hell. <laughs> You've sinned against God, like I have. He calls us to love and obey Him in everything we do, what we do in front of people, what we do in secret, even down to what we think. God loves you. 2,000 years ago, He proved that. God became a man. Jesus Christ, and he suffered and died on the cross to save you. He literally died to take your punishment and my punishment upon himself so that we could be forgiven and set free. When Jesus rose from the dead and he ascended to heaven, he defeated death and hell, and he's offering you and I eternal life. God can do anything. If you are willing, God can save you. Confess your sins and turn away from them. And put your faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus, if it's not too late, forgive me for my sins. Jesus is King. Jesus is King, He is Lord forevermore, Jesus. He is coming soon, He is Lord.